good morning uh this pleasure interacting with all of you uh especially because this is the occasion when we are interacting with the people from the same fraternity uh so there is always a, a kind of a positive feeling about uh this whole interaction because the joy as well as the challenges of our profession we can appreciate each other so that that ability to share and uh, ability to appreciate each other's joy and sufferings uh, builds a special connection with the participants and that's why this is a special occasion for uh, for me as a facilitator uh, what we are going to talk about in one hour uh, on three topics one is uh, about effective communication within the class there is a scientific structure to the teaching and facilitation we will look at one bit of it which i have found and which people have found very useful to structure our communication within the class as a teacher and a facilitator second we will talk about very important thing in the process of communication that is listening many of us forget that communication is as much about listening as it is about speaking so we will look at this science little more closely and third and very important which is from the particularly important from the classroom perspective that is notes taking how we take notes in the class and th can there be also a scientific way of doing it and in nutshell can notes taking be also a joyful activity so the overall this one hour is is focused on one simple broad objective creating a joyful creating a joyful teaching and learning experience in the classroom we all have experienced process of teaching and learning as a student and now as a facilitator from the student perspective these are some questions which we have asked ourselves and to our teachers and with our colleagues and these are the same questions kind of a perennial questions being asked by our our students with sometime to ourselves directly and sometime among themselves why i am not able to gain from my instructor who i know is very knowledgeable isn't it a perennial question we all have come across this why things go over my head this from the time immemorial students are asking this question how to distinguish books which are better than some others which book you are a student speak something and then we ask which book you are referring to aha uh -huh, this is not the book you should refer but how we can equip students to understand which to distinguish a a, a better book from the average book why some instructor ask more question than the answer they give in a class you ask something from a teacher and teacher ask three more questions as a student this has puzzled us as a teacher sometime consciously sometime subconsciously we are doing it to our students again making them making them also puzzled why some classes are more interesting than others even when instructors of the class are equally accomplished researcher and academicians what is the sometime we feel frustrated how in spite of many of us are teachers because of the choice huh? we are not by most of us are in the profession not by accident we are here because of our choice there is something we liked about process and act of teaching and learning perhaps it is love for learning which makes people to be a teacher because that's the best way of keep learning but in spite of our sincere intention very very good intentions and sometime hard work we are not able to create the magic in the class which which we aspire to there is no end to it there is no limit to it we can always create much better experience but there is a science which we can work upon systematically and make our our own classes more interesting from the teachers perspective from the instructors perspective these are the two questions how to keep students engaged in the learning process this is this this struggle is about keeping my students awake for the one and a half hours and students are masters because many many of them have developed this 
mastery of sleeping with the open eyes. The moment we really don't know how come during the class when I see a person is fully awake is able to send Facebook messages to the hundreds of the hundreds of his friends. Sometime it happens I, I teach in the school of management and I am a placement there and many time I send email to my placement student team asking something some information and I get response in one minute. And I am afraid how come this person has responded because he is supposed to be in the class. <laughs> he is in the class, he is away, he is not caught but he is responding to my emails. This is a great struggle of keeping students engaged in the process and to better, better prepare our students for the profession. I, actually, I think this is a deep question, how to prepare our students better for the profession. We are sending students to the world. We are making them better, more productive, more efficient, more responsible for the profession and to the planet. So, these are the questions. What I am going to present as an answer and many of you must be aware of it is not the final answer, not the only answer, not the full answer or complete answer. But this is one simple uh, topology or taxonomy which can help us to design this learning and teaching experience more consciously. So, perhaps answer lies in the fact that learning and teaching are not a straight and simple activities. It is activity of giving and receiving instruction. There is something much deeper happens underneath the communication. I always say communication is, is just a symptom, it is a tip of the iceberg. Something is happening below the surface because of which communication is happening. So, communication is function of all of us, the whole personality, our attitude, behavior, upbringing, socialization, all that goes into our communication. So, if we understand this complexity, we can create the kind of learning teaching experience we want. One of these things amongst many are is called levels of cognitive learning. Learning happens at behavioral level, kind of aesthetic learning. Learning also happens at emotional level. Certain things which used to upset us few years back, now I am, I am at peace with those. This is the emotional learning. Yeah. I'll I'll quickly explain what is Bloom's taxonomy, and then we will work around it uh, for about ten minutes. It is a it is about the cognitive objective, means knowing. It is not about doing. It is less about doing and less about uh, emotion. Of course, these are all connected. When we know something, something happens at the behavioral level, but it is focused on the cognition. Uh, it was developed in 50s. It is not the, uh, the Benjamin Broom was the first person in this large group. And sometimes the benefit of having your name is starting from A, B, or C. Because when the alphabetically names are arranged, you are known as the first author. So, that is the benefit Benjamin Broom is. Enjoying means of expressing qualitatively different kind of classroom use as a planning tool, planning for the class, and continues to be one of the most universally applied model. It was developed in 50s, and still we are finding it useful. It's a, it's a testimony of the uh, power of this model. And then his student Anderson revised it. Uh, before we actually explain it, someone sh should help me to make a statement which he or she thinks he or she knows. State anything in the field of science which you think you know, you know so many things. Huh? So, statement, give one statement which you think. Communication is a two-way process. Communication is a two-way process, wonderful. We all know and we can never forget even if someone asks in our dreams communication is one way process, two way process, three way process, four way process. We will take only on two way process, we all remember this. So, this is the second level of knowing. So, in a communication class 
we can all we can aim that person should remember these things or we can also aim that person should be able to explain these things. Now, can some of you help me help all of us to give an example and demonstrate this through some exercise that communication is two way process. Let us find out the listening skill of our friends. So, I call two, three people. I am going to speak two lines in English. Okay. To one person, you have to remember. Okay. You have to pass that same statement to your one of the friends. Okay. Right? We will do with the help of these three people. Okay. Last one, they have to deliver to the audience. Okay. That is it. Okay. Right? So, shall I start with the ladies first? Yeah. With you the can, same you quotations? Can, yeah, you, you Thank you. Uh, you could go out. Okay. I will call you. Ah, yeah, it is fine. I am speaking two lines in English. Okay. I have to tell them. I should not repeat. You should not interrupt me. Okay. You should listen. Yeah, and I have to forward them. The same same statement to you. Yeah. Bejan Darwala and his wife Rosni were came from Mumbai to Bangalore with their two daughters, Resma and Rasmi, by flight number IC three seven zero at ten thirty a.m. Bejan Daruwala with his wife Roshni uh, came from Mumbai to Bangalore at flight 10.30 a.m. with their children Rashmi and Roshni. Is it very difficult to okay. For me? It is supposed to be. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. So, Benjamin Daruwala <laughs> went, <laughs> went to airport, uh, Ahmedabad airport along with his uh, kid and uh, wife okay and uh, uh, yeah, and he was supposed to take flight at 5:30 wow <laughs> <laughs> now you deliver to the audience benjamin daruwala uh, went to the airport with his wife and his kids he need to go to ahmedabad at 5:30 pm <laughs> <laughs> now now we can find out the listening status or the listening skill status of us in this manner, right? Listening Thank anyway. Thanks very much. Can you repeat it? Agya, the original. L let me say, hmm. Bejan Darwala and his wife Rosni were coming from Mumbai to Bangalore with their two daughters, Resma and Rasmi, by flight number IC370 at 10.30 a.m. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much, sir. Uh, he was willing to share two sentences, we somehow negotiated with one. One was little simpler, second one was even more weird, <laughs> more, more complex. But the, what lesson? <laughs> one thing is remembering. 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 We have to retain so things. Is yeah, so <laughs> what we, we try to apply the two-way communication process over here. Of course, memory is important, it plays its role, but then changing with one data with the altogether different data means Ahmedabad was not at all in the sentence. <laughs> means I can understand you forget Mumbai, there was Mumbai in Bangalore and I forget Mumbai, but then bringing Ahmedabad is like something. <laughs> and then Bejan <laughs> becomes Benjamin. <laughs> so, this is the application of the two way process. So, we when we apply this <laughs> analyzing what is about this the two way communication process how one can analyze this. We can look at this example and explain it and analyze this whole phenomenon of two way communication by just looking at this example which just which was demonstrated here. If we have to listen, if we have to understand something about the two-way communication, how we will, how we can analyze this phenomena. See, there, there will always be uh, better ways of doing what we are doing. But whatever has happened, can we use this incidence for the learning about what you said, learn, communication is a two-way process. Yes, sir. Here we have seen barrier. Barrier can be on the part of sender, even it can be on the part of the Yes. Yeah. So, communication can be subjected to some barrier, 
barrier can be on the part of receiver as well as on the part of sender, sender. and in order to yeah something else sir, sir, it's an overloaded message there was too much content in one content obviously we get into the evaluation mode quickly without getting into the evaluation mode nahi nahi aapka sentence bahut lamba tha it's not like effective communication requires speaker and receiver mentally present yeah so Very it is first. about mental presence it is about memory yes about common frame of reference also so sometime we have to ask the sender to re to repeat the communication sometime we have to clarify question ask the clarifying questions sometime we can request for the practice all this is part of the analysis so the whole process so one small sentence which so the lesson is started with two communication is a two way process now we have explained it we applied it now we have analyzed it we we decom we kind of looked at the different component of the communication process look at the looked at the barriers look at the uh, looked at the methods of overcoming the that barrier how we can go to the next level that's where comes some of the elements which you said madam what did you say since it was a overloaded message so what is the solution if so many time so life is complicated we have to send the overloaded message sometime we have to send the we have to convey some complex things in the class so what to be done so we can broken into two three sentences okay and it could have been passed in that okay moment. so instead of making a long sentence sometime we can make the short sentences to convey our thought what else sender should know where to take the pause ah uh, pause will pause is help us to remember the stuff so so words are important pause are also important you change the pause place of the pause and meaning can be so so what is the learning we have to rate of words so communication can be in the form of small sentences intonation intonation is important pace and pause is equally are equally important now we are in the evaluation mode what is what this whole experience better so we when we teach in the class we don't teach our students to be failed huh? we are not there to prove our superiority we are the, the role of a coach and role of a facilitator is to make the student successful so in order to make him or her successful we need to communicate in certain way which can help us which can help him or her to be a champion to be the winner so when i was joining um, iit in 2009 and my phd guide also studied in iit many many years back in iit kanpur and then he went to iim ahmedabad he said one thing about iit and it 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 always remained with me he said that you know iit is not about finding the solution of a problem we were taught in iit that find not only a solution find a elegant solution of the problem for a problem there will be so many solutions what is the most elegant solution that is the essence of evaluation and then comes creation what happens in the phd process we create new knowledge we create product we design something so someone who has developed this exercise probably you only have developed have developed or someone else this is the process of creation creating an occasion to learn something or creating something to solve a problem which was not existing i was not aware of this sentence and how this can be used for the communication this was a process of creation if we are aware of if we are if we pay heed and attention to our subject matter we can keep creating these exercises to make student learn certain things this these principles are applied on simple thing as you started communication on two way process this can be used as on the 
engineering problems, computer science problems, take one topic and decide what level we want my students to operate. And write down, at the end of the class, students will be able to implement, carry out, deconstruct, critique, whatever. And accordingly, we can shift our communication. Accordingly, we can choose the exercise. Sometimes we have to choose case study, sometimes storytelling, sometimes life problem solving, sometimes projects. There is a science behind whatever the methods, we, whatever methods we choose and that will, that can make the bedrock of the communication process. Why things go above my head? Because sometimes teacher is, is speaking from the evaluation point of view and the student has not even reached to the understanding level. How to distinguish books which are better than some others? Books which explain and then provoke higher thinking are better. Why some classes are more interesting? Because sometimes the classes are more interesting when a facilitator provoke higher order thinking. We feel a kind of elevated. When this activity was going on and people were failing and we could see our limitation and our failure and their failure, there was some kind of elevation happened in this process and that is what make the things interesting, that is what can keep the student engaged and that is what perhaps can make the student better prepare for the profession. Okay? more time to exercise, but at your level, one simple thing you can do. Whatever topic you are teaching, uh, you can start with few, few sessions or maybe a course. You can decide in this course, at the end of this course, I want students to be able to write down those and accordingly choose exercises, problems, project work. We can make the whole learning and teaching process and the communication in the class more lively. Sir, good morning, sir. Yeah. So I am Dr. Sairam here. Yes. So I have a question actually. Mm -hmm. In I am teaching management <coughs> subject and in my department, some of subjects like production management and uh, some mathematical subjects, which is difficult for the students to make a note on it because of the subject, maybe the hindrance in the mind barrier. So, what things can be adopted for those type of subjects which is interesting and also it can be made very lucid? Uh, are most of your student uh, not having experience of the profession? No, actually they are the MBA graduates. MBA so graduates, so they, most of them would, do they have some work experience? No, no, no. Most of them, that is, that is why the problem is. When you, have, when you are teaching a production management to a person who has not seen a factory in his lifetime, it is going to be a problem. What, uh, what can work with some of the students, large number of the students, in the beginning of the course, if we can take them to some plant, okay. there must be some or the, which, which city you are from? No, I am in Erod, it is outskirts of, uh, uh, I think it is 100 kilometers from Coimbatore. Okay, so Coimbatore is an industrial hub. Yeah. You can no, we do we do take sir, actually we do take IV industrial visits to the uh, roads company and many manufacturing companies also, but uh, start with actually we don't go. So that's what I am saying. Before starting the course, you take them to the okay uh, to the sites. Let them see. That's how the plant works. That's how the batches are made. That's how the quality check happens. That's how uh, people follow the instructions. Or this is the uh, operating procedure and what, how one process is linked to the another. You explain things, the, you give the broad view from in the beginning of the course instead of waiting for the end of the course. Okay. And regarding mathematical things also, you know, or statistical things which the students does not have their interest to listen also. Okay. So, uh, some of the, the all most of the mathematical, mathematical problem which are taught in the engineering courses, I am not talking about that advanced mathematics and I am not the student of mathematics either. But I know that most of the mathematics being taught to the engineering graduates have some implication, some practical implication. Okay. So, I can only share what some of our uh, faculty members do. In the beginning of the course, they give 5, 6, 10 questions. Okay. For example, I am I'm, I'm reminded of one professor in the material science. One, one of his interesting question is, why water makes sound while boiling? And it is somewhere related to some mathematics and some calculation, then, then only you can calculate how much sound and why sound and all that. 
So, if we can give some practical questions, you at the end of the course you will be able to, can you, can you answer these questions? This, 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 no. This mathematics will help you to answer this question. That will establish the first level connection. So, we have to try out so many things. I have shared only two, but you have to try out things to keep them engaged. And see, that the whole the basis of adult learning is that adults learn when they find things meaningful. Okay. And this generation is particularly very pragmatic. So, their pragmatism is attached to placement, if not anything else. Yeah, placement will come again. That is what, but not that uh, this is what meaning they have identified for themselves. We also have to create meaning. We, after this course, you will be able to make the robots better. Okay. After this question, you will be able to assess the machine, the effectiveness of the machine better. After this course, you will be able to choose the production planning or production technology in more informed way. Would you, are you interested to do that? Who is the student not willing to become okay. smarter in his profession? So that's how we have to. Okay, so thank you.